Greetings friends! In the last video that we did, we talked about the importance of growing your own food and that that need is getting stronger and more and more important. But in this video, we're gonna, Lacey is gonna really be the one talking with you and showing you how to do this. But we're gonna talk about the importance of growing your own medicine to treat you and your family for different things. And uh, what are we gonna be doing today? We're going to be harvesting calendula and some other herbs and learning how to infuse these into oils to make your own healing salves. And why do people need to make their own salves and oils and things like that? Well, you know, if you don't have a CVS or Walgreens or drugstore close by, um, you can make your own antibacterial ointments and healing salves and they're better for you anyway. And uh, what will it help you with? Like things like scrapes and bruises and things like that? Anything from stings, scrapes, bruises, sprains, strains, um, any of those things, it'll help you out with it. What about planes, trains, and automobiles? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. One of the absolute easiest flowers to grow for your garden and will continue flowering all season long is calendula. And a lot of people know calendula has great healing benefits because a lot of products on the shelf at the drugstore have calendula in it to help with things like eczema or any type of skin irritation. So, but you can make your own really easy and it doesn't take that much time. All this calendula I got from Baker Creek. They had several different varieties of calendula that I had never seen before. So I picked some up for this year and all this is new. And uh, I actually have some that reseeded from last year. And that's one thing about calendula is that it will reseed itself and it grows so easy. It'll just come right back and you won't even have to buy seeds for the next year. So it wants come again. I like that. <laughs> Let's work. That's right. So in addition to these flowers being usable in the form of, you can actually eat them too. You can make tea out make of tea them. Make tea out of them. And like what Eating we're doing. them, they may be a little potent to eat them. Yeah, it wasn't my favorite one to eat. Uh, I like nasturtiums. They're pretty good to eat. But uh, back to what I was saying. They also can enhance and make it look aesthetically pleasing in your area. As and well as attract some beneficial insects and bees and things like that. Yes, and if you continue to harvest them, they're just going to continue to bloom. I just harvested these, um, I think about two or three days ago, and I'm already getting a whole nother harvest. So if you want to make enough calendula cream for you or your family or for other people, or just dry it out for others to use or save it for later, uh, you'll have plenty to do that with throughout the season. So check this out guys right here. This is the seed for the calendula right there. It's not completely dry, but there they are. So they'll just drop right on the ground themselves as the wind and whatever else makes them fall and they'll go right into flowers for next year. Or actually for this year, they, they could even go ahead and, I mean it's only mid-June now, they could potentially go ahead and reseed this whole area again and have even more plants for this year. So there's be flower power all in this bed. <laughs> <laughs> they almost look like the flowers on Mario when you get the, you get the power to throw fireballs. <laughs> and they smell really good too. Well, I've gotten all of these flower heads over here, but I do have some more to harvest in our other bed. Here's one little one right here that's kind of struggling to get the sun, but I'm going to clip that one off. So this is all from last year. I really haven't added anything. Maybe a couple things this year to this bed, but most of this is just coming back from last year. So all this calendula right here, this is all from last year. I did not plant this this year. 
So when you're clipping these, you're not clipping long stems like if you would for like some kind of flower arrangement. You're just clipping just a little bit to mostly use the flower, right? Yeah, mostly you're just using the flower. I just find it easier to keep some stem on it. Also, if you look, um, some stems will have multiple flower heads coming out on it. So you want to make sure you're only getting that flower and you're not getting another bud. Okay. So after you've harvested all the calendula that you need for this oil you're going to be making in yeah. town, what is the next item? I am going to be harvesting yarrow. And it's this white yarrow right here. This right here. I started this last year from seed and this stayed all winter long and then started really kind of taking over this year. I also have a purple variety right here but the colored varieties don't have as many medicinal benefits as the white does. So for the yarrow, you, what the medicinal aspects are in the flowers and the leaves. So I'm gonna cut this back pretty good because it's kind of growing everywhere. And then I'll take the flower heads and the leaves off the stems. And on these you just really are cutting them back you're not even trying to be oh, gentle no. with it no i'm just cutting them way back it needs to be cut back anyway because it's just kind of taken over but that should be a good amount to go in the dehydrator now that we have my yarrow that i'm going to need i'm also going to harvest some comfrey comfrey is also known as bone knit because they used to make poultices to put on um, areas like if you have a broken bone or a fractured bone you make a poultice put it right on top and it will actually help heal your bones quicker and there was one time and maybe two times that i believe i got bitten by a spider and it was it was really swelling up and it was getting hard and kind of like leathery and tough but you know what i put comfrey on it and it just started pulling the stuff right out of there and it healed it very very quickly Comfrey is also really easy to grow. This variety does not spread by seed, and uh, I like that because if you do have one that will spread by seed, you'll have it everywhere. If you plant this one and just keep it where you want it and don't try and dig it up, it will stay in one place. Like this plant and this plant over here have been here for probably at least four years, probably five years, and they haven't spread that much and I just cut it back and when anybody wants to come over and they they want some comfrey I dig half of it up and give it to them and I mean you can see it's huge and it stays huge all the time so when you're harvesting leaves you really want to get leaves that are nice and pretty they don't have any brown spots on them or anything so you can just pick away so why would you avoid the, the ones that are browning or yellowing and, and have spots on them and things like that? Well, just like your food, you want like the best to eat. So you want the best, the most healthy looking plants to use in your oils too. That makes sense to make sure you're getting the most out of the plants yeah. as far as the benefits from it. Yeah. So I'm also growing some other medicinal plants in here as well. And one that came back from last year, actually two that came back from last year. This right here is Echinacea. Echinacea is great. Right there. And it'll have a nice big purple bloom on it, purplish pink. And then back here, this big plant right here, I started from seed last year, it's called Elecampane. And it's good for uh, lung issues, things like that, asthma. And plantain is what we're gonna harvest next. And it grows like a weed, because it kinda is a weed. And it's in the garden right here too. I didn't even plant it here, but here you go. Oh wow, Look and these leaves are nice and huge too. These are gigantic. Wow. And this is Plantago Major, um, because it has the nice big wide leaves. I'm gonna grab a few of these also known as broadleaf plantain and i really like using these for for tea to make a really good tea they're really great if you feel like a cold coming on or you're sick 
uh, go find some plantain in your yard and make a tea out of it and it will help you recover faster it's great for uh, cell regeneration um, that's why it's really good for cuts and bruises and stings and it also is a has a pulling agent in it so it will pull toxins out so that's why it makes a really great tea really great addition to any kind of salve for your skin and you only got a couple of these there from the plantain yeah but i have more <laughs> okay and there are different varieties of plantain we have this is broadleaf right here and then we actually have narrow leaf over here okay well i had the nice big narrow leaf plantain plant right here but Sayla has been weed eating so she kind of whacked it down but this is a great example right here this is narrow leaf plantain plantago lanceolata it looks like a lance that's why it's named that so we have broad leaf which is really wide and broad and then narrow leaf right here now they all have the same looking seed heads that come out of the top and whenever I was a kid, we used to fold them over and, you know, shoot the heads off. Well, that didn't work very well, but that's what a lot of people know them for and not their healing benefits, which I think it should be the other way around. <laughs> and right here is actually another type of plantain. It looks like broadleaf plantain, but it's slightly different. And I just learned the difference recently. This is Plantago ruglii. I'm probably saying that wrong, but how you can tell the difference is look right here in the stem see they look really similar the leaves do but if you look at the stem the ruglia has the purple veining right there and then the broad leaf does not so does one have any more benefits than the other or just different varieties but carry the same benefit i've heard that the broad leaf has the most medicinal benefits but i'm not sure on that i've used both kinds with success so, I, I really don't know. Now what we have to do is put them in our dehydrator. Uh, you can wash them off if you want to. I didn't see a lot of dirt on these. So I'm just gonna put them directly into the dehydrator. And these will, it won't take very long for, uh, for these to dry. Herbs take uh, a few hours. They'll probably be dry before tonight. For the yarrow, it's a little different. What you wanna do is take your, your stem and you can just go backwards and pull the leaves off just like that. And then the flower heads, you can just pinch them off and put them down in there. Just like that. When you harvest your yarrow, the best time to harvest it is whenever it is flowering. So wait until it flowers and then harvest it. Instead of using a dehydrator, could you hang them upside down to dry them out? I've seen that technique done before. You could. You could tie them up, tie the stems up, and um, some people put like a brown paper bag around them and hang them somewhere that's dry and out of the direct sunlight. And you can uh, do it that way, but I just don't have time to do it like that or the space. So even if the dehydrator will make it lose a little bit of its medicinal value, um, I'm okay with that because it still works really good and this is just faster for me and easier for me to do. So hanging them upside down could require a little bit more time and space. So with doing this, uh, you can try to maximize the space if you don't have a lot of room to be hanging herbs up. So this could be a little bit more efficient. And like it's really humid here in the summer. So that's going to play a role in how long it takes to dry your herbs. and. For here, you know, when you have 80% humidity or above, it's really hard to get things to dry out completely. I 
For the calendula, you're really only using the heads. So you can do them like this right here. You can just pinch off the stem really easy. And that'll just give you a lot more room in your dehydrator. There we go. That's my last one. So all of those flowers fit on just one tray. And as you can see, there's still space in between them. So they have good airflow while they're in the dehydrator so they can all dehydrate evenly. Um, so here's our calendula, our yarrow, comfrey, and plantain. All these are gonna go in together on different trays. So now's the time to go ahead and set up the dehydrator and get them going. That's right, just turn it on. You wanna make sure you're checking on them every few hours just to see how dry they are because herbs really don't take that long to dry out. These will probably be completely dry before I go to bed tonight and I'll just turn it off and you know, bag them up in the morning. There we have it, we're finished loading this up. One thing I do wanna say is you do not need a fancy dehydrator to do this. I think my mom actually picked this dehydrator up for me from a thrift store for like six bucks. You can usually find them there, so keep an eye out. And you can, you know, you don't need a lot of stuff. You have to just start where you are, and this is what I have to use, so this is what I'm gonna use. And I just wanna encourage you to do the same. Okay, so it's been a few days since I put my calendula in the dehydrator. Actually, I've harvested more and dried more. So this is another second batch of calendula that I got. And I'm finding that you can harvest the calendula about every other day. You see more and more blooms coming on. So I harvested this the day before yesterday. And look, I even harvested more today. Right here, I have two more trays. So it just gets to be more and more and there's more buds out there so i think i'm going to start doing every other day harvesting of calendula so i have plenty for this winter whenever i need it and another thing i've been doing is i've already infused the calendula into the coconut oil that i have and i'm going to show you how to do that right now so the other calendula that i have dehydrated what you want to do you want to take your calendula that's dry and you want to put it in a jar. Now this isn't the only way to do this. I prefer to dehydrate my herbs first because if you put your herbs in here and they still have water in them, there's a chance that it can mold. And I, I just don't have time to keep an eye on if mold's growing and I, I just don't like doing that. So. That's why I like to dehydrate mine first. I get all my calendula in the jar, just like that. So nothing special. Taking it right out of the dehydrator, straight to the jar. And I like to use coconut oil. There's a lot of people out there that like to use olive oil, or if you're gonna use it in cosmetics, you can use almond oil, grapeseed oil, apricot oil. But I find that organic coconut oil is really easy to find so I just buy a pint of this I think right now I got it for like 450 which is great and so I'll just take my coconut oil and open it up and then I'll just put it in with my calendula if it's solid you could go ahead and warm it up and uh, just pour it into but there's no need for that just get it in there any way you can And if there's some left in the jar, you know, set it in a sunny spot, let it melt down, and then you can pour it in later too. So now you have your coconut oil and your calendula in your jar, super easy. And next you just wanna put a lid on it. So there you go, put a lid on it. And the next step is just to heat it up. 
Uh, you could just set it in a sunny window and let it sit for weeks and weeks, but I like I said, I don't have time for that. I don't have the space for that. So what I like to do is put it in one of these little crock pots that just warm stuff. It doesn't get hot. It doesn't, the water never boils in it. So I put my jar in here, but first to make sure that my uh, glass doesn't come in contact, direct contact with the bottom of the crock pot, I put a ring in there. This one's kind of rusted out, but I just set that down in the bottom, set my jar on top, and I'll fill the water up to this line right here, and I'll just let it sit on my counter. I've infused oil anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. I prefer to do 24 hours just to get all the goodness out of there, and then after that time, it will look like this. So your coconut oil will go straight from a, a really white or clear, if it's liquid, um, to a nice, beautiful golden yellow. Now in order to strain your oil out, you want to strain all the plant material out of it. And the easiest way to do that is with some cheesecloth and just a strainer. So I just line my strainer with a cheesecloth and put it over the bowl that I want to use. And then I will just pour it through. And you can, you know, just let it sit and drain out and just let all that good infused oil drain into your bowl. And you can squeeze it some too if you want to speed up the process. Make sure you get all that out of there. You don't want to lose any of it. There you go right there. Look how pretty and golden that is. Direct from the petals, straight into your oil. Now you have all that good medicinal healing right in here. Calendula is great for skin healing, skin regeneration, um, bruises, cuts, scrapes, anything like that. So I just gave you, I just showed you how to infuse, you know, calendula into oil. But I use this same process with all the other herbs that I infuse into oils. You can do them together. I've done plantain and comfrey um, together in in one oil and it works the same way. So actually I have, from my first harvest, I have calendula and yarrow in here and uh, I think a little bit of comfrey too. But you can just take them all mixed together, do the very same thing, fill it up with oil, heat it up 12, 24 hours, and then you have, you know, your other infused oil. Now you may be wondering, how do I use this oil, infused oil? You can use it straight directly like this. You don't have to mix it with anything else. Um, and you can just keep it around and put it directly on scrapes, bruises, any kind of skin irritation. That's what calendula is really good for. Or you can take this and mix it with other infused oils, like I had talked about um, yarrow and plantain and comfrey, those are all really great healing herbs that you can infuse just like the calendula. And what I like to do is take it even a step further and then turn these infused oils into my own salve. Now this one is uh, coconut oil that has been infused with plantain and comfrey. It's also mixed in with avocado oil, hemp oil, and beeswax, and a little bit of lavender. So all good healing properties. And it just stays solid at room temperature. So you can take it with you and don't have to worry about it leaking out anywhere. I like to do that. Another really great resource to have on your homestead is Rosemary Gladstar's Medicinal Herbs. These are just really common plants that you can grow or already have growing on your homestead and she goes over you know what the medicinal properties are and how to use them i really enjoy this book i have linked it to our amazon shop so you can check it out if you want 
And that's about all I have for this time, guys. I got more calendula to dry and more plant medicine to make. I hope this encourages you to grow your own medicine and just be able to give you confidence that you can do it too, just like me. I'll see you later, guys. Bye.